Huh. It's streams in the desert. <laughs> no, it's not. It's hot and sunny. <laughs> Feels like a desert sometimes. Or maybe where you're at, it's cold. I know when I lived in Alaska, <laughs> it got cold. <laughs> There were places where it didn't get that cold, like Ketchikan, where when I lived there, it was a rainforest and beautiful. But when I lived in Nome, Alaska, <laughs> it got cold. It could get 40 below and you could have 60 mile an hour winds out there. And that makes it cold. But in whatever circumstances I found myself, whether it was in the heat or the cold or whether I was in a isolated area where nobody was around or whether I was in the populated areas where everyone was around, the one thing I found to be true and simple was that I needed to be with God wherever I was. And the way I do it is through my devotionals, through my Bible studies are nice, you know, and going to church is good, and prayer life is fine, but sometimes, you know, I always needed just a little extra kick in the pants, you know, or a little extra reminder to look away from the things that I might be doing or thinking or saying and consider well what might be applied to my life, and that's what emotional for me is, is that it's the emotion of being devoted to God. It's a way of looking at God speaking to me by way of sharing these volumes <laughs> of devotionals, devotionals that I read and consider as being God speaking to me because I can say considered for your sake, but for me, oh, he's talking to me. <laughs> Ain't no doubt about that one. So when you can come to that conclusion, then they're a blessing for you. But if they don't, then... Don't listen. Don't watch. Be about what the Lord would have for you to do. But if you're here, it streams in the desert. <laughs> and it is, Wherefore, lift up the hands which hand down. Lift up the hands which hand down, and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way but let it rather be healed, Hebrews 12, 12, and 13. This is God's word of encouragement to us to lift up the hands of faith and confirm the needs of prayer. Often our faith grows tired, languid, and relaxed, and our prayers lose their force and effectiveness. The figure used here is a very striking one. The idea seems to be that we become discouraged and so timid that a little obstacle depresses and frightens us and we are tempted to walk around it and not face it, to take the easier way. Perhaps it is some physical trouble that God is ready to heal, but the exertion is hard. Or is it easier to secure some human help or walk around in some other way? There are many ways of walking around emergencies instead of going straight through them. How often we come up against something that appalls us. We want to evade the issue with the excuse, I'm not ready for that right now. You're, you know, that's that's not for me, or that's not my ministry. <laughs> some sacrifice is to be made, some obedience demanded, some Jericho to be taken, some soul that we have not the courage to claim and carry through to some prayer that is hanging in fire, or perhaps some physical trouble that is half healed and we are walking around it. There's lots of excuses we create, but only one that relates to what God is saying. God says, lift up the hands that hang down. March straight through the flood, and lo, the waters will divide. The Red Sea will open, the Jordan will part, and the Lord will lead you through to victory. Don't let your feet be turned out of the way, but let your body be healed, your face strengthened, and go in the way. Go right ahead and leave no Jericho behind you unconquered, and no place where Satan can say that he was too much for you. That is a profitable lesson and an intensely practical one. How often we have seen in that place, perhaps you were there today. Pay as little attention to discouragement as possible. 
plow ahead as a steamer does, rough or smooth, rain or shine, to carry your cargo and make your port is the point. <laughs> you know, in all of that, it gets kind of like twisted up in the Englishes because it's an older, archaic devotion that's in there. But the point being is that sometimes we would choose to the path of least resistance. You know, we would rather go the easy way and kind of like steer around and you know, veer around all those things that God might be throwing in our face to deal with as we face the issue head on. Now, I'm not going to say that, you know, everyone that runs out there and provokes confrontation is correct, you know, because there's a lot of people that somehow get, well, like the popular saying is, get off on getting confronted, you know, and they seem to have no peace, but they have to create hostility. And that, to me, is not what Jesus said or is saying now. But you know that there are things that you have in your life that have come up that you didn't want to deal with at the time. You just kind of went, well, you know, Lord, I know that I'm a Christian and I really don't want to talk about it to my spouse. Or I really, you know, my children have told me they don't want to talk about it, so I'm not going to bring it up. Or, you know, Lord, every time I, you know, think about it, I just don't know what to say, so I don't want to share that. And only you know what the circumstances are, whether it be sharing the gospel or whether it be, you know, as the devotional said, on healing, you know, it's kind of a touchy subject there because a lot of people think that everyone has to be healed and, hey, look at me. You know, I'd love to tell you that, you know, I'm a fine specimen of, you know, exacting faith and believing that, you know, I am a wonderful God-fearing person, that I have had all my diseases healed and all my scars are gone. But you know what? I have an incurable disease that's technically a miracle that I'm alive because I was told I wouldn't live past 30. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> I'm fat and happy and content. You know, but I've been all the way down to 89 pounds, you know, and if I thought about it, I could drop 40 pounds. Well, it's getting harder to do that nowadays, but I have Crohn's disease, and at the time that I had it, it was pretty radical and pretty extreme, and it about killed me three times or more. And there was no laying on of hands and people praying, because they tried that, and it didn't work, you know. But yet there were times where God did do miracles, where suddenly, oh, I'm healed. Wow. So you have to keep healing in perspective. There is a time where God does the miraculous. And I know for myself, when I was a missionary in Mexico, I had a brother that went with me, and we were laying on hands, this one guy, and he had legs that were, you know, tiny finger length, you know, of width and you know, I was doing the translation, and he was praying for this guy to be healed, you know, and I had a feeling that he was going to be an idiot and try to pick him up. And, um, you know, I was more like, Lord, don't make me, don't, Lord, don't put me in this position. Lord, no, no, you know, I, I don't want to be here. You know, and I'm meanwhile thinking that in my mind, so there's no faith involved in my part. And sure enough, the brother that was with me decided to pick the guy up, and we picked him up, and he fell flat on his face, you know, and that didn't dissuade my friend but it made me ticked off at god so i split you know and went up on my campsite to sit down and pray and argue with god and the funny thing was was that the next night when i had to do translations for the pastor and i was up in front of the congregation and we were there and it was a little you know dust hovel and we were had some floor walls the man walked in the church i was shocked the man walked to the front pew I was more than shocked. <laughs> I was mad at God, but no, I, I was, but you know, I got over it, but you know, I dealt with it. But the point is, is this. When God chooses, he chooses to heal the way he chooses, and it doesn't matter what you think you have to do it the way that, you know, has to be done. God can heal when he decides to, and you might be not receiving, and I'm not going to say receiving a healing, because that to me sounds so weird, but... You might be standing in the way of God wanting to say to you, all you need to do is accept what God is wanting for you. So, you know, if you're a disabled person, I've been there. I understand what it's like. If you're a person that has a disability, I've been there. I know what it's like. But if you're a person that's had both the healing 
ministry and the lack of healing ministry, the faith to heal and the faith not to heal, you know that God is in control. So for those of you that are for some reason dealing with this because you see these phony faith healers or the phoniness of what could be a healing ministry that might be accurate, let me share you with this. Chuck Smith had a fun thing to say. He used to say something about didn't involve his faith, but it involved God's will. And that's about all you need to do. Whatever's God will for you, accept that part. If he wants you to go to, who knows, some place that you think that you, the guy, you know, you don't like the guy or whatever, and God says go, then go. Who knows? God may use him like he used a donkey. <laughs> or if you have something that God says, I'm not going to heal you like Paul, then be content. I have an ileostomy. I'm content. I'm happy. As a matter of fact, I'm thrilled because what most people do in the morning, I don't have to. Ha, 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 ha. You guys all suffer. But the point being is that that is the place where God wants us to be. Content with godliness for its great gain. And if you accept God's will for your life, then you'll go forward in what he wants for you today. Whatever that is, whether it be for healing or for grace or for sharing with a family member or for finding a job or whatever it may be. It's not a matter of faith. It's a matter of acceptance and recognition of walking with God and talking with God and doing what He wants you to do. That's real faith because that's acceptance of Him as being the living God. Mine's alive. How about yours? <laughs>